think I like the foamy kind better. The valley is so nasty. Oh yeah. yeah we're getting somewhere now. Alright, Wanda, get that battery. So I'm taking the plugs out of the back of the motor here. It's pretty loose. Okay, here we go. It's out. So I got all three out. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can uh, clean out these uh, oil passages. I already got this one clean out. This is a piece of filler rod. I used it. See it in there? I used it to knock out this front plug. Sorry about being so jumbled around. Anyways, I knocked this one out, and I'm gonna knock these two out. And uh, it'll help me get to block the passages. That Those passages uh, blast down a little better. Yeah, this is the plug that came out of the front. Let's see where I kind of smacked it. A piece of filler rod. Anyways, you could use like a dent puller to snatch those out, but I don't have one. So the dowel pins are out now. We got all these out, little plugs out. And I got the head bolt, or the head, cylinder head dowel pins out. So that's good. Um, these guys right here do not want to come out. Not at all. Um, and there's another one over here. Uh, so I'm gonna go home and get some better uh, tools and try again. I might heat that area up and try to get it out. But with the uh, water, not water jacket, the freeze plugs out, I can get in there and I can blast the blast that out a little better with a pressure washer. And uh, so we do that. I'm gonna get some uh, brushes. I cannot find the ones I have for the life of me, so I can clean through these holes and clean, you know, front to back. And yeah. That's it, I'm gonna get it cleaned up real good, and then uh, I'm gonna take it and get, uh, I'm gonna leave it at the machine shop to have them put uh, cam bearings in it and freeze plugs. I'm gonna be ready to start putting this thing back together. Ooh, that was oily. Hey guys, uh, hanging out, pulling the rings out of these, about to clean them up. Yeah, almost done. Oh, last one. I am ready to get this thing put back together. I don't know how well you can hear me. It's raining pretty hard. It's actually raining inside right now. It's stinging rain and upside down rain and sideways rain. Yeah. Anyways. My progress is not as fast as I wish it was, but I'm getting a little bit done every day. So that's good. All right. We're gonna use this to clean these pistons up. I did it before on my 95. That car's got stock pistons in it, but it'll clean them up really good. So you can all see what that is. Oh yeah. So let's get after it. Hey, check that out. That's. That's not too bad. It's a uh, BP 93 and nitrous. That's uh, that, that actually looks better than the pistons I pulled out of my 95. Uh, and it had like 130,000. Uh, these are up around 170, maybe 180. But uh, we're about to dunk these and uh, let them soak and, and get beautified and cutified. I got me a little thing right here. Just put it through the rod. Down it goes. There you go. All right. So uh, we'll let it sit in here uh, overnight. And tomorrow morning I'll clean it up and I'll rotate through all of them. Um, the last time I did this, it took me a week. Um, if, you, if you're on it, uh, it won't take a week, but um, I've still got to get the cam burns put in and I've still got to get some of my other things squared away. So if I want it done quicker in a week, I'll just speed up the process. Otherwise, it's fine. Um, 
Anyway, that's a lot of a lot of jibber jabber, but first one's in the tank. Uh, seven to go. Hey, hey, I've been plugging away this week. Um, I got all the pistons cleaned. Let me show y'all one of those. Well, here we go. That's uh, that's clean. That's after it's been dumped. All the carbon's off of it. It's it's good enough. Um, so yeah, got all the pistons clean. I, I dunked it in that solution, or uh, that that carburetor dip. Uh, one day I did three pistons in one day. Um, I wasn't in a big hurry, so I got all those done. Um, what else? Oh, got all the ring grooves cleaned out. Um, let me spin this thing around and show y'all something else. Uh, the motor, the, the block is clean. It's got new freeze plugs. Um, I hone the cylinders. Um, got the main bearings laid in there. Um, let's see, it's got your new cam bearings in it. So that's good. Let's see. I used the ball hone and I didn't like it so I used a regular stone hone and that was more better I got a mess over here Every, everything I have is a mess now I use a stone hone uh, low rpm and kind of a quick reciprocating action uh, got me a pretty good cross hatch pattern um, oh let me show you all this so this is my gun cleaning kit or one of them this right here is what I this actually I'm gonna lay it down and step back. That right there is out of the gun cleaning kit. I use that to do uh, the lifter galleys. So here, about where the cam goes, I use that to go through there, there, and there, and got it cleaned out real good. Uh, so that's a cool trick if y'all need that trick. I'm about to lay the crank down in it, and that's exciting. Um, it's uh, it's just, it's not hard work. It's not bad work. It's just it takes a little bit of time to do it right, and I've been really um, hypersensitive about dirt and dust. So uh, especially seeing the bearings that come out of this motor. So it just it takes a little extra time to do it do it clean. So this is the by far the worst motor I've ever um, done this kind of rebuild on. Um, this one had no cross hatching in the bores. Uh, the skirts on the pistons are pretty scratched up. Um, see what else? Yeah, um, I'm putting a mismatched crank in it, which it's probably going to be okay. Um, it did not prove to be okay in the '95, but fingers crossed that this one's going to be okay. Um, this this motor's kind of a get me by motor. Um, hopefully, it does well. I mean, it's going to have new rings and new bearings and uh, a newer oil pump, so that's good. Um, last night when I was putting the rings on the pistons, I did break a ring, or it broke. I don't think I broke it. Uh, something, I think something was funny in the metal. So uh, anyway, so I've got to get one ring, uh, which is kind of aggravating. So uh, I, by the end of the day, this should be a V7. Hey, Saturday was a sad day for me guys um well the night before friday i broke a ring trying to get them on the piston and it broke i don't have the ring to show you but it broke about right there where my thumb is which is kind of weird um and then saturday uh putting one down in the cylinder i broke the end it's kind of like right there i don't know if y'all see that anyway right there on the edge um, that made me really sad. So I just kind of threw in the towel and called it a day. But anyways, I, I got some replacement rings today from the machine shop. He had some spares. Let me show y'all something. All right. So here we go. Let me see that. Is the light too strong? Okay. So the oil ring... For this piston is a 4.0, and then the first and second ring is 1.5, and this is metric. And then the first number, I believe, 
is all, well, that's also metric. So, <clears throat> anyways, I went to the machine shop. He had another box, but it was, uh, they were for a, a Vortec 350. And, uh, anyways, we looked at the numbers on the box and also checked the rings. So, the replacement rings I got are actually for a Vortec 350. So, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I don't care. As long as they work. Uh, I mean, it's the same ring. Uh, but anyways, I've got all my rings now. I didn't have to buy another box. Or I didn't have to buy any individual ones. Luckily, he had some. So that's good. Uh, that made my failures from Saturday a little more tolerable. And the fact that I don't have to wait three or four days to get an individual set of rings is awesome. So let's go ahead and pop some of these in the motor. Actually, before we put them in the motor, I want to tell y'all something. So... Um, the top ring, I believe, is a molly ring, and the replacement ones I got are cast. And the uh, guy at the machine shop said that on a kind of rebuild I'm doing, it's better to go with cast because they're more likely to seat than a molly ring. He said if you don't have a fresh bore, they likely won't seat or they won't seat very well. So that's why I've got all cast rings. They're all very fragile. I will say that the top ring, the factory set of top rings is very flexible. And the second ring is more rigid like a cast ring. And let me tell, show y'all one other thing if I can. Okay, so on the bottom, y'all see that? Okay, so you see the gap on the oil ring? On every single one of these pistons, the gaps on the oil rings were lined up. They were not 180 apart. It didn't have a gap on one side and then one on the opposite side. Every single one of them was lined up. So I'm thinking that this motor was built on somebody's first day. Uh, so anyways, I'm not putting them back like that. I'm gonna have the, the rings um, opposite of each other. But I thought that was kind of crazy. So back in 1988, somebody's first day, they put the motor together in my car. So that's kind of funny. Fellas, plans have changed. <clears throat> my original plan for these heads was to port them and, you know, get them touched up a little bit. Um, but, um, I don't really have the time to do that. It'll take me an honest week to get them ported, do the work I want to do to them. Um, I will show you a little trick this is actually a trick from David. So these valves are cut to fit, cut down to 85% of the valve size. So once that valve goes all the way in, then I've got the port, I've got the throat. I, I would have had the throat right. Um, so there's the, you know, I put it in the lathe and I just took a grinder and I ground it down until it was 85% of 1.54 and then on this one I ground it down same way in a lathe with a grinder I ground it down to 85% of um, 1.84 is that right? Yeah it that's right uh, so anyways <clears throat> that's what's up I'm not going to port these heads also uh, someone broke my favorite carbide I use for porting and I just don't have the time or the money right now to buy another carbide or order one from McMaster Car. Um, so anyways, they're gonna get the valves lapped and they're getting put back together. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna get them cleaned up. Let's go. Back to the pressure washer. I love that thing. It is awesome. I'm about to put some bling on here. I got some engine degreaser. We'll get after it real quick and uh, clean them up before I lap the valves. Hey guys, it's Ray here. We did a little bit of editing on this one and figured out we would not be able to get it all into one video. So we're going to make this one a two-part. We're going to end it here. We're going to call it a wash. We've run out of steam. All right, <laughs> that's enough of that. But we'll see you all here. Uh, we'll have part two out momentarily.